In this video, I will show you three methods of how to track button clicks with Google Tag Manager. Why three? Because button click tracking is not as simple as you might think, and some tutorials online are heavily oversimplifying it. Because of that, you actually might be losing some clicks on your website. And in this video, I will show you how to avoid that. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager, consider subscribing. In today's video, I want to take a look at a very popular topic where actually many people are making mistakes. And that topic is button click tracking. Website buttons can be coded in different ways. Therefore, they require different tracking techniques. That's why this video contains not one, not two, but three tracking methods. I will start with the simple ones and then at the end you will learn about a third type of buttons where many GTM users are making mistakes because they just have no idea that this problem exists at all. However, because of that, they're actually losing a lot of clicks in their analytics setup. So let's dive in. In this video, I presume that you have already installed Google Analytics 4 with Google Tag Manager. This means that you have the GA4 configuration tag. If you're new to this and you don't have this tag yet, I have another video that will explain how to install Google Analytics 4, and you will find a link to that video in the description of this video. So let's get started with button click tracking with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. Now, the thing with buttons is that developers can code them in different ways. And because of that, there are different methods of how can you track button clicks with Google Tag Manager. So let's take a look at one example. Here I have a button, and if I click it, I will be redirected to some page right here. Now let's say that I want to track clicks of this particular button. If I enable the preview mode of Google Tag Manager container, and then I try to click this button, you will see that there is a link click. Now this is happening because after we have installed Google Analytics 4, it also enabled link click tracking capabilities on a website. So if you're dealing with a button and you want to track clicks, you can click it and then you can check if you see the link click right here. Now, if you are using, for example, older version of Google Analytics, which is Universal Analytics, or maybe you're using some other tool and in your setup there is no Google Analytics 4, then you probably will not see this event. In that case, you should go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, click New, Trigger Configuration, and click Just Links. Then leave all settings as they are and then you can name this trigger All Link Clicks. Then you can save it refresh the preview mode by clicking the preview button. So then you should click the button once again. And if even now you don't see the link click in the preview mode, then it means that this particular tracking method will not work for that button. But don't worry because the next method that I will explain in this video should work. Anyway, in my case, when I click this button, I actually see the link click right here. Now, the reason why this happens because sometimes buttons are coded to look like buttons, but they are actually just clicks. In fact, if I do the right click and hit inspect, you will see that this button is surrounded by A tags. And A tag in HTML means anchor, or in other words, link. So this entire button is a link that is designed to look like a button. So if I want to track clicks of this particular button, I should have a link click trigger that is configured to do so. So let's take a look what kind of data do we have in our preview mode. I go to the preview mode, then I choose the link click and then go to variables. Unfortunately, we don't have anything related to click right here. However, if we go to the data layer, you will see that we have actually some information like classes or URL. Now, the reason why I don't see it in the variables tab is because I haven't enabled the variables and I mean click variables. So go to variables in Google Tag Manager, click configure and then enable all click variables. Then when the saving loading disappears, you should refresh the preview mode once again by clicking that preview button in the top right corner and then click this button. Here I have the link click once again, I click it and then I go to variables and I see a bunch of click variables and some of them have some values. In your case, you might also have the value in the click ID field. Maybe you will have some click target, but in my case, I have click text, click URL, click element, but this one is more advanced. So we will skip this for now. And then we have click classes. So what we can do here is that we could update our just links trigger and make sure that it fires a tag. Well, I mean, we will create a tag very soon. So we can configure that trigger to fire a tag only when click classes contains, let's say this value, because this is the main button of my homepage and its class is hero double underscore and then 
btn. In fact, we can quickly copy this, then go to the website, then do the right click, click inspect, and then I will click control F to enable the search and then enter and check how many elements have this particular class. And right now I see just one out of one. So this means that this class is unique enough to narrow down just to this particular button. There are also some more advanced options. How can we check whether this class is unique enough, but maybe that will be a topic for another video. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers. And if you haven't created it yet, then you should go to New, Trigger Configuration, just Links, and then have this view. But since I have already created the trigger several minutes ago, I will just click this one and I will update it. Here I should click some link clicks, then click classes, contains, and this one. So if the click classes of the clicked element contains this particular value, and in our case it does, then this trigger will be activated and we will later fire a tag that will send the event to Google Analytics. So now let's rename the trigger. I will name it link click and then this, click save. And then finally, we have to create a Google Analytics 4 tag because we will send this link click event to GA4. So go to tags, click new, tag configuration, GA4 event, and then choose our existing GA4 configuration tag. And then we can name this event. You can name it whatever you want, actually. So for example, we can name it call to action click or something like that. Then together with this event, we can also send some additional values because we have things like click text or click URL. And that data can be sent as parameters with this event. So we can add, for example, two rows and the names of the parameters can be whatever you want. However, I like to follow the recommended naming convention of Google Analytics 4. So below this video, you will find a link to this page. And here I see some parameters that we could actually reuse in our setup. For example, here is the click event for outbound links and Google Analytics 4 automatically tracks parameters like link classes, link ID, link URL. Also, we have things like link text. So I think that we could enter some of these parameters in our tag settings. So let's start with link text and also link URL. But if you don't want to use these names, you can use some other names like click URL, click text. This is up to you. However, keep in mind that as of the moment of recording this video, there is a limit of 50 custom dimensions that you can use in the interface of Google Analytics 4. And I will soon explain what I mean. So speaking of link text, I can use the variable which is click text in Google Tag Manager and it will return this value or whatever the name at that moment is of this button. So here I can click this button and then click click text and then link URL. I can insert another variable, which is click URL. It will return this value. Let me click this button and then I will choose click URL. Finally, in the triggering section, I should click anywhere and then I should select my link click trigger that I have just created. Let's name this tag and then click save. Oh, it looks like I forgot to select the configuration tag. So I will select this tag right here and then click save. Now let's test the setup. So I click preview, then the preview mode refreshes. And now I will click this button. Once I click it, I go to the preview mode of my Google Tag Manager, click on the link click event, and I will see that my tag has fired. I have some typo right here, but this should not affect the data that is sent to Google Analytics. In fact, if I go to Google Analytics 4 and then go to the debug view, which is at the bottom of the sidebar, here I should see that call to action click event right here. And if you click it, you will see some data that was sent together with it, including link URL and link text. So if you want to track a button click and that button click is basically just a link, then go ahead and choose this method that I have just displayed. However, let's take a look at another example. Here I am on another demo page and here I have just one button and let's say that I want to track clicks of this button. So remember that I have already enabled a link click trigger in my container. And if I click this button, I will see some message. Well, obviously this is just a demo button, but if I click this and I have already done that, you will see that there is no link click right here. This is because this button is not a link. If I do the right click and inspect, you will see that there are no A tags right here. So this is not a link. Therefore, just links trigger will not work. But don't worry, because in Google Tag Manager, we have another type of click trigger. And if you go to Google Tag Manager triggers and then new and then trigger configuration, you will see another type, which is all elements. Click it. This trigger will track clicks on any element on a website. Just links trigger tracks only links. So let's create this trigger. Let's name it like this and then save it. Let's click the preview button because after we have created this trigger, it enabled additional click tracking in Google Tag Manager. So let's click this button again after we have refreshed the preview mode. So I click it and now you will see another event which is not link click, but it is just click. 
I click it, I go to variables, and I see some values of the variables. For example, this click is not a link click, therefore click URL is empty, but we have click text and we have click classes, which is call to action. So in this case, if we want to track and fire tags on this button, we could, for example, try to use this value in our all element clicks trigger. So instead of firing this trigger on all clicks, we would like to fire only on some clicks. And in this case, the condition could be when click classes contains call to action. So I copy this and I paste it right here. We can again check if there are no other elements on the page that contain that very same call to action class. So do the right click, inspect, then control F or command F and then paste the class name and you will see that I have only one element right here. Obviously, maybe some other pages might have elements with similar classes, so you should probably keep that in mind. But on this page, this is the only button. So I believe that this condition is quite okay. Although keep in mind that click classes might be a bit fragile in some cases. If your developers are constantly updating the website, that class might disappear one day because your developers maybe did some changes. So if you have an option to choose from click ID and click classes, I would always go with click ID because in most cases it is a bit more reliable. Now let's go back to Google Tag Manager and rename the trigger. Instead of all element clicks, it should be just click and then this class name, click save. Now I could create another GE4 event tag for this, but let's say that I want to reuse that very same tag that we have created in the previous lesson. So in this case, I will just click on it and then add another trigger. So first I clicked anywhere on this triggering section or I can click on this pencil and then click plus and then select that new all element clicks trigger right here. Click save, then click preview to refresh the preview mode. And let's click the button once again. Now I see that click, I click on it and I see the tag fired. Then I go to the debug view of Google Analytics. I close here and now I should see the call to action click event very soon. And here it is, I click on it. And now you will see just link text. You will not see link URL. This is because at that particular moment when this tag fired, click URL variable was empty. And Google Analytics for tag does not send parameters for example, link URL, if the variable is empty or undefined. So you don't actually send some trash or empty values. If there is no value, the parameter is dropped. So if the just links trigger doesn't work on a button click, then you can use the all element clicks trigger right here. And both of these examples were quite friendly for Google Tag Manager beginners. However, in real life, there is a third kind of situation that is a bit more advanced, but it is quite popular. So let's take a look. Here I am on a page where I have two buttons. So let's say that I want to track clicks on the add to cart button. And if I do the right click and then inspect, first of all, I will see that this element is not a link. Therefore, just links trigger will not work. But since we have at least one all element clicks trigger enabled on a page, this is okay. So we should still see something in the preview mode related to that click. So let's click that add to cart button. I do that, then I'm in the cart and in the preview mode, I see click right here. So far, so good. Now, if I go to variables, I will see things like click ID, I will see click text. So in this case, you might think that it will be enough to create one trigger, which is all element clicks, some click, and then click ID is this one, right? Well, not really, because actually you will be missing a bunch of clicks on this button. You will track clicks on this text, but if I, as a visitor, click somewhere right here, you will not. Now, the reason why this is happening, because this button is not a single element. And this is actually quite popular among developers to do. So if I do the right click on this text, you will see that this is a button element. And if I hover my mouse on it, you will see that this entire button is highlighted. But within that button, as a child, we have another element, which is just text. And this is the text. So if I click on a text, I click on one element, but if I click on the background of the button, I will click on another element. So actually, let me show you what I mean. Now I will click on the text, then I go back and then I click on the background. In the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, we have two clicks. This is the first click on the text and the second click. And in fact, you can try to memorize this click ID right here. We have add to cart text. Now, if I click another click element right here, I mean click event, here the click ID is different. It is add to cart, not add to cart text. This is happening because we have, as I said, two elements in a single button. 
we have one element which is text and its ID is add to cart text and the background of the button or the shape of the button, it has a different class which is add to cart. So if you try to use this click ID in your trigger, you will be tracking only clicks on this text. But some visitors, they just click somewhere right here and you would be missing those clicks. So one of the possible options could be like this. Take a look at both IDs. They both start with add to cart. One is add to cart, the other one is add to cart text. So in fact, I could take this part and use it in a trigger and do the trigger like this. Click ID, starts with, and then this. So this would work. And in fact, I can save this trigger and show you the final result. Then I will create a tag. This tag will be a different one. So it will be a G for event. And then its name will be add to cart, let's say. And then in the triggering, I will select that add to cart trigger. Finally, let's name the tag and save it. I click preview and now I will click the button in two places. The first one will be on the add to cart and I mean the text and the other one will be on the background. And in both cases in the preview mode, I should see the click event and on both of them, my add to cart tag should fire. And it did, that is exactly how things work. Now, if I go to the debug view Google Analytics, I will see two add to cart events, the first one and the second one. So everything is working fine. However, in this case, I would say that I'm quite lucky because both elements in the button have IDs. But in some cases, it might be more complex. For example, maybe there is no ID on the text. And this is actually would be quite often in real cases. So let's imagine that this text has no ID at all. So it looks like this. So if you're dealing with something like this, then you will have to apply some more advanced techniques. And that technique involves a thing called CSS selectors. Now, if you're new to CSS selectors, I highly recommend to get familiar with them, at least with very fundamentals, because they will help you a lot in Google Tag Manager. In the description of this video, I will post a link to some resources for you to get more familiar. But in a nutshell, CSS selectors basically are like patterns that allow you to write more complex conditions that allow you to select certain elements on a website. So for example, in this case, we could write a condition that will track clicks on all elements that have this class or are directly below this element. And I mean that are child of this element. Now the child in HTML basically means an element that is not directly like below it, but it is like on the lower level of that element. So it is quite the same as with folders in your computer. So we have, let's say one folder right here, we have one folder right here, but in reality, these are like elements. And if I expand it, this is a child. So we could create a condition where we will be tracking clicks on this element and all of its children. And in this case, the child is the text that is right here. This can be done with a thing called wildcard CSS selector. And let's take a look at how can we create this. Let's go to Google Tag Manager and I will update the existing add to cart trigger right here. So I click it, I delete that condition which was related to click ID and instead I choose a variable which is click element. Now this is very important. If you want to work with CSS selectors, you have to use click element variable and then you must select matches CSS selector. It won't work with equals contains or something else. It works only with matches CSS selector or does not match CSS selector. So let's select this option. And now we are going to write a CSS selector that will be looking for elements that have either this ID or are children of this element or maybe even on the lower level in the hierarchy of this button. So in order to write a valid CSS selector, you must be familiar with the basics and the fundamentals of the CSS. So let's create a selector. In this case, I'm going to target elements by this ID. So I copy it and then I go to the preview mode. Now, if I want to target an element by ID, there is a symbol in CSS that is this one. So then I'm looking for elements that have this particular ID. So if a click happens somewhere on the background of the button, this part will work. But now we have to enhance this selector and make sure that it also fires if a click happens somewhere on children or maybe on children of those children within this button. And that can be done with the following sequence. First of all, we have to enter comma because comma in CSS selectors means or. So we are looking for clicks on this element or on any element inside of this element or below this element in the HTML structure. So here we enter comma and then we will enter a thing called wildcard CSS selector. That selector is written like this. We basically just copy this first part and paste it once again with the 
hashtag right here, then it is important to add a space and then an asterisk. So this means any child or any even lower element below this particular element. So we are looking for clicks that happen on element with this ID or any of its child or any of child of their children. So we can call them, I don't know, let's say grandchildren. Now, if you are a beginner in Google Tag Manager and this part looks kind of confusing, don't worry because, well, it is. This is a bit more advanced technique. Therefore, don't worry. I would just highly recommend for you to dedicate some time and get familiar more with CSS selectors because it will make your setups more powerful. That is for sure. So click save in the trigger. That trigger is already added to the tag. And let's take a look if this tag is still firing. So I click the preview button. Then after my preview mode has refreshed, I go to the website and I will click the add to cart button once again in both places. Click on the text, then go back, then click on the background. Now let's go to the preview mode and I click the first click event and I see that the add to cart event fired. I can click it and I can see whether my CSS selector condition was met. And this matches CSS selector condition was indeed met because this green check mark is visible. And if I click on the next click event, the tag is also fired. And in the debug view of Google Analytics 4, I see both add to cart events right here. So that was a third and the most advanced option of how can you track button clicks with Google Tag Manager. But if the first two options didn't work well, you probably have no other chance than just trying to implement this one. Oh, and one last thing that I wanted to mention, and that thing is related to the previously created call to action click event. With that event, we are sending two parameters, which is link text and link URL. If you plan to use these parameters in your GA4 reports, and I mean things like analysis hub or some standard reports, by default, they will not be displayed in your interface. So if you want to see them, you will have to register them as custom dimensions. So you should go to custom definitions, create custom dimensions, and then register them. If you don't know how to do that, then check the description of this video where I will explain how to register custom dimensions in Google Analytics 4. And one really, really last thing is that you will start seeing events in your regular reports. And for example, in this section, not immediately, but most likely the next day. Or maybe in some cases you will need to wait for at least several hours. So be patient. And that's how you should track button clicks with Google Tag Manager. The first two methods were quite standard and simple. And many other tutorials online also covered them. However, that third method with a wildcard CSS selector is often overlooked. And that's where most people are making mistakes. So I hope that this tutorial will help you avoid these problems in the future. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.